looking to switch up your skincare and beauty routine? In today's video, I'm going to talk about five products from The Ordinary that you might want to check out. Hey everyone, my name is Lisa. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Lisa Monique Beauty, where we cover all things beauty and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. So there are a lot of videos on The Ordinary. I have done two videos myself. I'll link them down in the description below if you're interested in seeing those. And most are using some really well-known popular Ordinary products. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about some lesser known ordinary products that you might be interested in trying. So here's the caveat so you don't feel like I'm trying to dupe you into anything. I have not used these products yet. I just purchased them and I'm waiting for them to come. They've already been shipped, so they should uh, be coming shortly. But I don't like to do skincare videos anymore with products that I've just tried maybe for a week or, or two on my skin. But overall, I do feel like with skincare, you need to try I like to say two months to really see if you're going to see any results. So that's a pretty big time commitment. And so at the end of the summer, maybe uh, into the fall, I will come back and give an update on what I think of these products. I have researched these products enough to know that a lot of people have found them helpful. So that's what made me want to add them to my routine to test them out. Okay, so let me just tell you a little bit about my skin before we get started. I have normal to dry skin. I have slightly sensitive skin. So I do try and avoid certain products like l ascorbic acid, you know, vitamin C, because that does irritate my skin. My biggest skin concern is my melasma and my hyperpigmentation. Having said that, I don't really avoid the sun because I spend a lot of time outdoors and I split my time between Arizona and Florida. So if you spend a lot of time outdoors in Arizona and Florida, you are going to get some sun on your face. I also have thinning skin. Um, it's starting to just drop and droop just a little bit and I have some fine lines and wrinkles and a little bit of crepiness right here. Okay, so the first product that I am going to test out is a peptide and it's called Argyroline. Now this retails for $7.90 and has potent anti-aging properties. So this is a synthetic peptide, which is the basis for collagen and elastin production. Argyroline peptide slows down the muscle contractions in your face, making your skin appear like it has less fine lines and wrinkles. Now I have tried this before. I tried it when I first started my YouTube channel from a different brand, but at that time I didn't realize how long you needed to be experimenting with skincare before you could see any results. So I tried it for a couple of weeks and didn't notice anything and have since thrown it out. So I'm going to give this another go for several months to see if it really is a quote, Botox in a bottle. Now, if you believe other YouTube videos and other mature beauty channels, they have said that it really did make a significant difference in reducing your 11s, crow's feet, and the nasal labia fold. So that's what I'm going to concentrate on. I have a lot of deep 11s. Yeah, they're really deep. Um, and I definitely have uh, some lines here. So I'm very interested in seeing the long-term results. Now, The Ordinary does not recommend you use this with any direct acids, which are your glycolic, lactic, mandelic acids, or with your l ascorbic acid, which of course is the most popular form of vitamin C, or with your copper peptides. Now, it's interesting to me because most of these unique products that I'm trying today are um, should not be mixed with the copper peptides. So normally I use the Needless, Dermatology's Needless Serum. I really love that for the niacinamide, but it does have copper peptides in it. So I am going to put it on the shelf for the next few months while I'm testing out these products. Okay, so the next product I purchased is an acid. So I will have to alternate it with the Argyroline and not use it in the same skincare routine. So I am going to try the Ordinary's Mandelic Acid 10% plus HA. It retails for $6.80. And the reason why I decided to test out the mandelic acid is because it is the best direct acid for sensitive skin. The molecules are a little bit bigger, so it's slower to penetrate. Uh, it is an exfoliating or skin or surface peeling acid, but it is the most gentle of all of them. And then having said that, because I have the melasma and hyperpigmentation, which did develop, the melasma down here did develop when I did a chemical peel because my skin type is that medium skin type and it does darken with certain acids and when it is traumatized. 
So the mandelic acid should be gentler to prevent that hyperpigmentation because I do have that darker skin. So I'm going to use it once a day in the evening. Now it's interesting to me because The Ordinary has revamped their website since I first started doing my videos. They've made it a little bit easier to see uh, what you should mix and not mix with products and finding all the contradictions and things like that. On their website, it actually seems like they're not recommending these direct acids anymore. So it says on their website, while exfoliating acids can result in quick visible benefits, we generally suggest the use of indirect forms of skin exfoliation in favor of the direct forms such as this formula due to the potential inflammation and sensitivity associated with acids. Please refer to the NIOD non-acid acid precursor for such a suggested formula. So I guess they're no longer recommending these direct acids, the AHA, BHAs, which really their website was built on selling these products. But they are now encouraging the use of their non-acid acid precursor, which retails for $55. So it sounds really interesting. It, the description is the NAAP is a non-acidic alternative to acid-based Epidural, epidermal resurfacing. Instead of using direct acids like AHAs and BHAs or retinoids that are common in skincare, NAAP uses fermentation, bioderivatives, and amino isolates that act as precursors to skin compatible acids, encouraging visible radiance and visible surface regularity without the redness and inflammation associated with acids. NAAP was found non-irritating in an independent single 48-hour patch test. So that's kind of really confusing sounding when I'm reading it. I have to read it really slow. But basically, it is supposed to do the exfoliation without the redness and irritation, which I have experienced. And so maybe in the fall, I might test this product out. I really wanted to test out a lot more affordable option, so I didn't want to jump into this one, but it does sound really interesting, and that could be like another product you might be interested in trying. Okay, but I'm doing the mandelic acid, so we're just going to try a nightly surface peel that's going to be a little more gentle on my skin. All right, and then I decided I want to try an antioxidant. I'm trying to work around all the different uh, skincare serums and ingredients that you might want in your skincare routine, and this product was something I'd never heard of before, but it is a very well-researched ingredient called pycnogenol. And The Ordinary's pycnogenol 5% retails for $9.80 and it is a powerful antioxidant. It is a natural plant extract and is derived from the pine bark of the French maritime pine trees. And it's really popular, I guess it's been popular for a long time as like a dietary supplement. And it also is in a lot of skincare. And there are studies that show that even when you apply it on the skin, it is effective being absorbed into the skin. So you still benefit from a lot of the properties that you get when taking it orally. So I'm gonna put a couple links down in that description below on the pycnogenol. So if you want some additional information about it, because I found it really interesting. The list of potential benefits is so long. It can be used for reducing wrinkles from UVB rays, decreasing skin thickness, reducing skin roughness, improving visible signs of aging, protecting from UV rays, preventing inflammation, reducing redness, decreasing melasma areas, reducing discoloration, as well as preventing photo aging and protecting against skin cancer. I mean, this sounds like a miracle ingredient. So pycnogenol scavenges for free radicals before they can cause damage by oxidative stress. Now it binds to the collagen and elastin and helps with cell regeneration. It is a natural anti-inflammatory and it supports healthy blood circulation. And it also can help recycle oxidized vitamin C on your skin. So it's not like you can just mix it with your old vitamin C in a bottle. It's not really gonna do anything, but if you do have some oxidized vitamin C and use it in conjunction with pycnogenol, easy for me to say, then uh, it can help reactivate it. Now, obviously, because I've had issues with the vitamin C being too irritating for my skin, I'm not going to try that. Now, this has a slightly red tint in an oil base. So the Ordinary website recommends that you wash your hands after applying and avoid contact with lighter fabric. So your towels, your beddings, your light color clothing, I'm not sure if it's going to add any sort of tint or anything to lighter skin. I have medium toned skin, so I don't anticipate it will have an issue. I did see a video, I'll put it down below. I think it was something Miss Ash, 
and she used the ingredient and she showed it rubbing in her, on her hand and said she didn't notice it tinting her skin. But then I was looking at it on her hand going, you know, can I see it on her hand? Is that, is that a little tint on her hand? So who knows? Uh, but anyway, I'm going to test it out because it has so many wonderful, wonderful, wonderful benefits. It can be mixed with any of your other antioxidants except for the copper peptides. It should be applied after your water-based serums, but before your heavy, heavier serums or moisturizers, though it can be mixed in with your moisturizers if that's how you want to apply it. Now, it also has a natural woodsy smell, which I'm not sure what that means, but I guess it's pine bark, a uh, derivative of pine bark, so uh, I can imagine that it smells a little woodsy. There is no additional fragrance, so that they're not trying to cover it up. So it is going to have a very organic scent. And the next product I'm trying is a moisturizer, and it is the Natural Moisturizing Factors Plus HA. It retails for $5.80. Now, the Natural Moisturizing Factors, or NMF, are elements that keep the outer layer of the skin protected and well hydrated. The NMFs are made up of amino acids, let me look at this, fatty acids, triglycerides, urea, ceramides, phospholipids, glycerin, saccharides, sodium PCAs, and hyaluronic acid, and many other compounds that are naturally present in the skin. So this is the barrier layer for your skin. Now, reviews online are a little bit mixed on the texture of the product. Some say that it is gritty and difficult to rub in like a thicker sunscreen, and others say, well, they put it on after all their serums and it just blends and glides right in. The Ordinary actually made a comment on somebody's concern about the texture to apply an oil right before using the NMF or mixing two or three drops of oil in with the NMF before you apply to your skin. So even though this is my five Ordinary products that you may want to try and I already threw a sixth one in, this is going to be my seventh. I also purchased the Rose Hip Oil so I don't have any issues blending this product into my skin. And again, you can also mix the Pycnogenol in with the NMF and kind of put them all in together and I think it probably will blend in and absorb into your skin better. Okay, and the last Ordinary product that you might want to try is for your hair. It is the Ordinary's Multi-Peptide Serum for Hair Density. It retails for $17.80, so it's the most expensive product I've purchased. And the premise is that this concentrated formula is designed to support hair health so that it looks thicker, denser, fuller, and healthier. So I just did a video on how I keep my hair healthy in my 50s, and I will put that up here and also down in the description below. So I was a little hesitant to add something else into the mix because I've been increasing protein in my diet, I've been doing hair mass, but this product really interested me. And even though I have nice healthy hair, like overall when I take my ponytail, it, you know, it is a little bit thinner and sometimes Sometimes I do get the shedding, so I do get the shedding. So this product really interested me. Now it contains four well-known ingredients used to fight hair loss and increase hair thickness. I might really butcher how to say these four ingredients, so I'll put them across the screen so you will know what the ingredients are. Now the first one is Redensol, and that is used as an anti-hair loss serum. Redensol reactivates the hair follicles, and I'm gonna read a little bit here, by providing nourishment and oxygen and promotes them from the resting phase to the growth phase. The next ingredient is Procopil, Procopil, and it is a peptide to strengthen the hair. It activates the hair follicles by providing nourishment and oxygen, and it does that by targeting the leading cause of alopecia, which is 5A reductase, which converts testosterone to DHT in our bodies. And high levels of DHT can shrink your hair follicles and decrease the growth cycle. So the Procopil kind of targets that and prevents that transformation from happening. And it also contains Caprixyl, which is another hair care ingredient commonly used in shampoos and serums created to prevent and stop hair loss. And it also inhibits the conversion of testosterone to that DHT. And the fourth ingredient is Bicapil. I really don't know how to say these things. Bicapil, which delays cellular senescence or aging, which means thicker and more robust hair shafts and larger hair bulbs, which then means 
thicker hair. So it's also an ingredient in a lot of lash serums. Individually, these four ingredients don't seem to do a whole lot to combat hair loss, but together they have shown some success. To use, you apply on a clean, dry scalp. It is a leave-in product, so it's best to do at night before you go to bed. I'm really, really interested in trying these new products. I'm revamping my entire skincare routine for the next couple of months. And again, I will do a follow-up in the fall and let you know of my experiences. Now, if you've used any of these products and have pros and cons or you know some hints on using them, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. And if interested, don't forget to check out my other videos on The Ordinary Products. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.